Hello, pre-algebra students. We're in section four of chapter two where we're going to multiply integers. Um, there are just a couple of things we need to pay attention to when we're multiplying integers. Do they have different signs or are we multiplying integers with the same sign? So here's uh, what you need to remember if they have different signs. The product of two integers with different signs will always be negative. The product of integers with the same sign will always be positive. And I had a student share this with me last year. This is great. If they have different signs, maybe they're half asleep and half awake. Either way, they're not feeling too good. So different signs, you're going to turn out to be negative. Or vice versa, maybe they um, are waking up in the morning, but they're still sleepy and they're gonna be negative. So we're gonna make these into uh, unhappy faces. So opposite signs make you unhappy. And on the contrary, maybe you are wide awake and feeling great, that's gonna make positive. Or if you are sound asleep, both eyes are shut, that's also gonna make positive. So those are gonna be our mnemonics to help us remember when do we have negative signs and when do we have positive signs. So let's work this problem. We have different signs. So I already know that my answer should be a negative answer. So I'm going to just go ahead and circle a negative because I have a positive and a negative. And then I just take care of 4 times 3, which is 12. Opposite signs, my answer is going to be negative 8 times 5, which is 40. So it's a negative 40 and a negative 12. Now, the next two examples, they're going to have the same sign, both positive. So I know I'm going to have a positive answer, and 6 times 6 is 36. And here they are both negative. Again, remember our smiley faces. If they're both negative, two negatives make a positive, and 7 times 4 is going to give us a positive 28. <clears throat> now, what happens when there are three numbers? Well, we obey the order of operation. So first, I'll take care of 6 times negative 3. So those are opposite signs, so it's going to give me a negative. And negative 2 is going to wait its turn. So 6 times 3 is 18, and it's negative because I have a positive and a negative. Now I'm ready to multiply negative 18 times negative 2. So two negatives make a positive, And 18 times 2 is 36. So we just work from left to right. All right. Let's, I'm going to work this middle column with you. I have a positive and a negative, so I have a negative outcome. And that's going to give me negative 54. Let's review our multiplication tables. 9 times 6 is 54, and it's negative because of opposite signs. We have opposite signs again, so that's going to be a negative 55. Circle those answers. I'm making the faces, so it's a lot of circling. Two positives. Two positives. This makes me happy. So I'm going to have a positive outcome. And eight, uh, excuse me, 6 times 14 is 84. A positive and a negative. So that's going to give me a negative answer, a negative 72. And working from left to right, let's do that work here. I have, first, I have a positive negative, so it's going to be negative uh, 42 times 2. Again, it's a negative positive, which is also results in a negative answer. So we have, or you can also look at the odd number. So we have two positives and a negative, so that's going to make it negative when there's an odd number of, uh, of negative signs. An odd number of negative signs will always give you a negative outcome. So 42 times negative 42 times positive 2 is a negative 84. All right, so again, an odd number of negative signs. So I know my answer is going to be negative. We have negative 36 times 2 which is going to give us a negative 72. Alright, here I have an even number of negative signs. See this problem? Pay attention to this. Compare this problem with 17 with 20. I have a negative and two positives, therefore it's negative. I have two negatives, so my outcome should be positive, because remember, if we're asleep, we're happy. Two negatives make a positive. So negative times negative, 5 times 6 is positive. 30 times a positive 7 is going to give me a positive outcome. 
again because I have an even number of negative signs. I had two negative signs, so I have a positive answer. If I had three negative signs, beware of number 21. Let's just do that one together. Let's jump over there. Negative times negative is positive, so that's a positive 12. Then times a negative 8, and 8 times 12 is 96 but it's gonna be a negative 96 because it's opposite signs and that gives us a negative answer. So again, I had one, two, three negative signs. So an odd number of negative signs gives you a negative answer. An even number like here or here, an even number of negatives are gonna give you a positive answer. So check to see if you have an odd or even number of negatives. Now, skip on over to dividing integers. It's section two, five. Dividing integers with the same sign. The quotient, which is the outcome of division, of two integers with the same sign is positive. That sounds just like with multiplication. If they're the same sign, we're happy. Either we're asleep or we're wide awake. Either way, we're happy. So division with the same sign turns out to be positive. All right, let me show you how that looks the quotient. That big word just means the result of division. So find each quotient. In other words, divide. 14 divided by 2. They're both positive. 14 divided by 2 gives me a positive 7. Alright, here we have negative 25 divided by negative 5. There are two negatives, so I know my outcome should be positive. 5 times what gives me 25, 5 times 5. But wait a minute, it's a negative 5. Well, negative 5 times positive 5, that would be two opposite signs, would give me negative 25. So if you know the rule about the signs, you can take care of knowing that your answer is positive before you actually do the math of 5 times what is 25. All right, the rule for dividing integers with different signs is also very similar to that of multiplication. If we have uh, the quotient, division in other words, of two integers with different signs, the outcome is going to be negative. So again, that's that one eye each way. If they're negative positive or positive negative, our faces are not as happy. They should be negative. So 36 divided by negative 4, opposite signs, I should know that's going to be a negative outcome because of the opposite signs. And 4 times what gives me 36? 4 times 9, and so it's negative 9. Here I only have one negative sign, so that means opposite signs. Where's the negative? Does the negative go with 42, or does the negative go with 6? It doesn't matter. These all equal the same thing. There's only one negative sign, so my outcome is going to be negative, and 6 times what gives me 42? That's 6 times 7, and it's a negative 7 because of the signs. All right, let's truck right down here to the middle column again. I have same sign, so they're going to be positive. 18 divided by 2 is a positive 9. Here I have opposite signs. I have a positive and a negative, so I should have a negative outcome. So that's going to be negative 10. 50 divided by 5 is 10, and it's negative because of the signs. Again, even number would be... Um, an even number of negatives would make a positive answer. An odd number makes the negative answer. So if this is going to be a negative answer. What's 45 divided by 3? I believe that's 15. Two negatives. Two negatives make a positive. So that's going to be a positive answer. And 200 divided by 4 is going to be 50. Two uh, opposite signs. So it's going to be a negative answer. Do you see how quickly I'm deciding if it's positive or negative? And then I say 5 times what is 100? And that's 5 times 20. And here is a division bar rather than the division symbol. Some people think of this as a fraction, but all fractions are is dividing things. Um, so 36 divided by negative 4, opposite signs, two different signs. So it's going to be a negative answer, and it's 4 times 9. Okay, I'm going to ask that you go ahead and finish column 1 and 2 on your own. And I believe you have on the back of this page, um, dividing integers continued, where we talk about the mean average. So the definition of mean is average. To average numbers, you find the sum of the numbers and then divide by the number of items in the set. Sum means you add them up and then you divide by how many numbers 
were in the set. And we will use our rules for dividing integers. So those are those rules for dividing. If they're the same sign, either happy or asleep, uh, they're going to be positive. Opposite signs will be negative. So that's our uh, rules. And the same applies for finding the average. Okay, so we have uh, an oceanography problem. The diving depths in feet for seven scuba divers studying schools of fish were, and here are seven depths. Find the mean diving depth. The mean means find the average of all of their different dives. So I need to add negative 12 plus negative 9 plus negative 15 plus negative 8 plus negative 20 plus negative 17 plus negative 10. So I'm adding that up to find the sum of all of the depths. And when I finish with the sum, I'm going to be dividing by 7 because that's how many numbers are in this set of numbers. All right, so the associative property allows me to associate negative 12 with negative 9, which will give me negative 21, plus, let's associate these two numbers together, negative 15 and negative 8, give me negative um, 23, plus negative 37, plus negative 10. All right, <clears throat> keep on adding. This is going to give us negative 44 plus negative 47. And that two negatives. Again, we're adding. We're not multiplying here. Somebody's thinking, I know you're thinking you have two negatives. Why isn't it turning positive? This is not multiplication or division. This is all addition. We're adding negatives. When you add, you keep the sign if they're both negative. And we don't have opposite signs. We have the same sign. So we're adding them up. And this gives us negative 91. Be careful. A lot of students get in a hurry. They'll circle that as their final answer, and they'll forget that we're taking the average or the mean. Mean means average, no pun intended. All right, so how do I take the average? I have to then take negative 91 and divide it by 7. If you can't do that in your head, then take the time to do 7 and negative 91. 7 goes, it's going to be a negative answer. Here's where that rule applies. We have a negative and we have a positive, so our answer is going to be negative. This is division. This is the rule, not over here. Um, all the way um, to get negative 91, we were just adding. So we're going to have a negative. Uh, it goes once, 21, a negative 13. So our average depth is negative 13 feet. It gave us the unit of measure. It said they were using feet to do their diving. So uh, some went as low as negative 20, and some did as short as negative 8. But overall, the average depth, our final answer, is negative 13 feet. All right, jump down to number 1 in the exercises. It says uh, this is about weather. The low temperature in degrees Fahrenheit for a week were negative 3, 5, negative 9, 2, 6, negative 11, and negative 4. And it asks us to find the mean temperature. That means they want the average. How many temperatures were there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So I'm going to, again, be dividing by 7. So I have to first add up negative 3 plus 5 plus negative 9 plus 2 plus 6 plus negative 11, plus negative 4. All right, so be careful. We're, we have opposite signs. I will subtract and keep the sign of the larger. Here, I have opposite signs. I'm going to subtract and keep the sign of the larger. I have opposite signs. Subtract and keep the sign of the larger. And then I have negative 4. Okay, so all right, so as you keep combining, you get negative 14, and now you have to divide by 7 because we're looking for the average. So the average is negative 2 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, I know this video has 
uh, been very long so just attempt number two on your own and we'll save the rest for class so I will be checking to see that you did attempt number two have a great